Let's talk a little bit more about these ductile and brittle materials and how you actually test what's ductile versus what's brittle, right? The way that you test it is with what's called impact fracture testing. And so it, it's a real world extension of the concepts we've been learning about thus far. Impact fracture testing is extremely aggressive. <laughs> they pick basically the most severe conditions we've talked about so far. You're doing it at low temperature when things tend to be very brittle really high strain rate right, when they tend to be brittle, and you do triaxial loading. That just means that your material has a notch like this. We intentionally put a notch in it right here, so we've got the crack already started and it's more likely to go all the way through. Now how it works is you take your material like this, and you've got a blade that's gonna come down from on high, right? It's going to start out at some height, it's going to swing and hit your sample, and then it's gonna swing up to some new height. If your sample wasn't there, it would swing and it would reach some height, right? So that's the zero sample case, right? Then it's going to swing, but when you hit a sample, some of its potential energy is going to be absorbed as it hits your sample, so it's gonna swing up a little bit less high. So by taking that difference in height, you can figure out the difference in potential energy, and therefore what the energy must have been that got absorbed into your sample as it fractured, right? Crazy that that actually works. You can actually do that test and it works. But that's totally how it is. You take your sample. Uh, again, you start it up at some position. It's going to swing through. And instead of reaching some higher position, it's only going to stop right here. And this difference in height right between the two will be equal to your fracture energy. Okay, So you can do that at a bunch of different temperatures. You can do different samples. And they'll typically do them as a function of temperature and get curves that look something like this. If your material has a ductile to brittle transition, you'll see it have some energy down here where it's not absorbing very much, right? The impact energy absorbed is low at low temperatures. And as you heat it up, they'll transition to a higher amount of energy. More energy gets absorbed at higher, energy, at higher temperatures, right? Another way to see this is if you were to look at the fracture, fracture surfaces, right? Using fractography. Take a look at these samples, samples A and B. As you start at very low temperatures, negative 196 Celsius, and then you slowly warm it up, Take a look at how the fracture surface looks different. In each case, you've got your notch, right? This is the notch that was there initially, right? Because they put a little notch in it to start with. But then from low temperatures, it's much more flat. You can see it's cleaving great big grains in half, right? Those different regions of different metallic luster are different grains of materials, different orientations, right? And then as you move to higher temperatures this way, you lose those grains, it becomes more crumbly and rough because it's deforming more. It's allowing much more deformation so you can see the transformation take place in that material, okay? Um, degreasing, you know, this ability to transition from ductile to brittle is a function of grain size. Reducing the grain size can reduce the temperature of your transition, right? Um, increasing the carbon content typically raises the transition temperature. And why should we know about this? Um, there are some amazing examples in the literature, probably nothing more stunning than the Liberty ships uh, built during World War II. Uh, as you probably know, we had Japan attack us in a surprise attack, and the vast majority of our Navy was completely decommissioned on December 7th, 1941. And so we had to very quickly assemble new boats to serve in our Navy. And so they assembled these very inexpensive, quickly built Liberty ships. What they didn't account for is that when you manufacture them in wherever it was, San Diego probably or something, um, it's a different temperature than the ocean up in the northern Atlantic Sea. So when you're fighting you know, a war in those very cold temperatures, all of a sudden the metal switches from ductile to brittle, and as the waves are happening and the stresses are present on the boat, the whole boat's actually fractured. You can see them split right in the middle there, which is absolutely incredible. Um, so there's been some cool work on those. So that is the ductile to brittle transition and how you go about testing energy absorbed during fracture. Basically, you use your old friend from physics, potential energy, converting it to a different value. Energy had to go somewhere, and so it went into the material.